Today I wanted to do a Hanfu DIY tutorial, or just doing a Hanfu. This is the one that's come from the Qishang Rukin, if I said it correctly. It's one of the type of Hanfus that are throughout history, but most famously seen in the Tang Dynasty. So if you're interested in watching this, please give this a look. If there's any constructive criticism that you guys give me, I would love to hear that. So let's get started. So because I'm very new to all this and I don't have all the jewelry, I'm doing kind of a village girl kind of look and more of a simple broken down version of it. First things first, we're going to start on the skirt and I'm going to start by just basically ironing it. It's so wrinkly. So I took out the steamer I got for $12 at Walmart and I started just steaming it right away so that when I start doing my pleats, it won't look as stiff or wrinkly and I don't have to keep repeating the ironing method. Now these are a bunch of materials that I'm going to use to go with the skirt. I was going to put tulle over the top of the base, but it's not really necessary. But like I said, iron it down and then get started on your pleats because that is very important. You want to have a crisp but clean look. Now right around here, I'm actually doing the pleats for the center part of the skirt and you're going to do the same thing for the back panel. And basically what I'm doing is before I pleat all the way down, I'm pleating at the top so I know where I want to start it and where I want to end the center front. So depending on your width and length of a person, you're going to need to just like kind of go around it and see how you do it. For example, my length for how long the center front was was around 18 and a half or 19. But I ended up making it too long an accident, like making those pleats. So it was around like 22 or 23. So just keep that in mind. It's always good to have a measuring tape. And this is like 99 cents either at Walmart or Joann's. So you can never say you can't really have a measuring tape. Before I go ahead and sew everything down, I'm going to cut out my center front uh, away from the rest of the fabric and hem down the fold so that I can do the last step, which is just ironing down the pleats. This makes it more uniform and more kind of closer to the off, like the, kind of like the aesthetic of the Hanfu from the Tang Dynasty. So that's what I'm doing here. And you can make your pleats longer, which I will do in a later clip. So just stay tuned if you're curious on that. Now, like I mentioned before, you can actually make your pleats longer. I actually decided last minute I wanted to do this, so sorry for like kind of like the weird fabric lay. But you can make your pleats longer. I normally suggest doing this in the beginning, so you're not like me trying to play catch up. But if you have to, then just follow this method. This is just how I did it. I'm trying to make everything more kind of like together, but you can see there's kind of like some wrinkles here and there. But as long as it's close to like what you see authenticity wise with Han Fu's from the Tang Dynasty, that's actually pretty accurate, then you're pretty much fine. But this is just how I made mine. So once you're done sewing everything down, I know I'm probably gonna get some questions on how I did my pleats. I made mine around seven inches or seven and a half inches long. So the same method you're using for the center front, you're gonna do exactly on the same thing on the back for this. Now the next thing we're gonna do is the shirt of the Hanfu. It's just pretty simple. I did do it according to some tutorials and pictures. So hopefully you guys can stay tuned and I did a little cheat coat way for the pattern. So this part, like I'm gonna mention again and again, please iron it down because if you do not do it, your shirt's gonna look like a jigsaw puzzle all over the place because it's not equivalent, not only by the measurements of you writing it down, tracing it out or sewing it, but also cutting it out as well. So please fold this and iron it. So I put it on a fold, so you're gonna see how that services later to making the shirt. Once I have everything ironed down, I took my long sleeve shirt and I ironed that as well, just to keep everything very straight and 
precise. Um, once I iron the shirt down, I'm actually going to take the neck of the sleeve and put it towards the fold of the fabric. Now that's going to help you out so you don't have to worry about the neck of it being too short or not knowing how to do the measurement, but that's going to help you out. This is a little cheat way. So now I'm going to take my sewing chalk and actually trace out the edges of the shirt and the sleeve. So you're going to do it as a t-shirt kind of design at first. And I did a couple of inches out so it's even on both ends. So make sure that's even. And then I'm going to just cut out the pattern itself so that the front and the back are together according to the fold. And you'll see exactly what I'm saying on this next clip. Now this is how your center front and center back is going to look like because it's connected together from the fold. I'm going to actually go ahead and start on making the measurements for the opening. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my measuring tape and I'm making the opening on what is going to be even enough so it's not too wide. So I chose around 5 inches if not a little bit over and then I'm going to just draw my distances from the shirts in between and then I'm going to mark out the neck area. Now for the neck area I made the mistake by actually doing it as a circle. It was kind of a bad idea, so you'll see why later because when I put on the neckband, it was a little bit more challenging, so please do a square neck area. Don't do a circle like I did because I had to learn that the hard way later. So going forward and completing this shirt, I'm actually going to take a spare piece of fabric and I'm going to add it on to make the rest of the sleeve for the long sleeves of the Hanfu. And now I'm ironing it down before I do any measurements like I mentioned before and I'm actually going to attach the short sleeve to the rest of the fabric, pin that down and then I'm going to do my length and I should show it in this clip how long I normally make my sleeve like from that distance of the cuff all the way to the end of that fabric but you'll see that in just a moment. But that's how long I did make this sleeve to make it more kind of like loose and long, but not too long to where it's touching my like my ankles in another way. Now for the neck band, it was pretty easy. I just took some spare fabric, made the like fold over and then pinned it down before ironing it and then I sewed it down completely. And I'm doing that not just only for the neckband, but for the side tie pieces that go for the shirt of the Hanfu. So it's gonna go on the sides, and once I turned it inside out, I'm just ironing it down, so it has the more crisp, clean edges. And then I'm gonna sew it to the shirt, and then the neckband's done. And then pretty much the top is done as well. And then you should move on to the belt part of your high-waisted skirt once everything is done. But this is how I did everything in more detail. Now once you put the neck air band on the shirt, you're going to actually move on to the next step, which is the belt for the high-waisted skirt. Now this is important because it's going to be the focal point of the dress slash skirt, so it's important to do embroidery or applique. But if you're curious on how I did mine, here's how I did mine. I first start by sewing down all of the pleats of both, both the top and the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and just pin down a few more of my pleats because I wanted to make sure that it stays in place. And then the next step, I'm going to just start on the belt. So the belt actually helps out with this because I want to make sure my pleats don't move underneath the belt. So I'm going to actually go ahead and make my basis of it and making sure that both sides for the front and the back of the skirts are going to be even. Once I have it even and ironed out, I'm going to actually start on just designing it. I took a pencil and just did the basics of it, which I'm going to do a branch with some flowers on it, along with some butterflies and some leaves. I would say get an embroidery pen, because the seeing the way that this looks, I didn't think it'd be that bad doing handmade stitches, but the more designs you do, the more you have to make yourself work. And make it easier for yourself, and if you want to hand stitch, go ahead, but if you don't, Get an applicant that you can get from Joann's or even Walmart nowadays because they're doing pretty good sales on them. But it's pretty easy and I'm watching actually this video of Hanfu stuff to encourage me and also inspire me. I love Yumi King so that's who you see in the background. Thumbs up if you love her. And this is the basis of how long I've done my thing. So once again make sure it's something you want to do if you don't have an embroidery pen or just a patch. It makes it a lot easier. 
So that's why you see all the stretching of the blue fabric because I did this all hand stitch myself. And when you're making the belt, the next thing I'm going to do is iron down the hems. Now it's not just to make sure that both top and the bottom are parallel and more straight, but it's also for the backing as well. So this is going to help you because it doesn't allow you to put any interfacing or some type of boning to make sure this is straight. Because remember, this is going to be above where your bust is going to be at. So you don't want it to be too stiff. You want it to be firm, but enough to go with the skirt. So I'm just ironing down the hems together so they're both even and nothing is out of shape. And once I have the hems folded down, I'm putting two and two together, wrong sides together, and then I'm gonna iron it down completely, then sew them together. So this is what you're gonna do, not only for the front of the belt, but also the back of the belt. And this is sewn on individually to each part of the center front and center back of the skirt. Just pin down your belt to the skirt, and then you pretty much sew it down in a complete line. Now remember, make sure you do it slowly but surely because you don't want to make it look kind of loose. But once I do that, I'm actually doing it slowly and surely also to not get both patterns off course, like the center back and it's boning. So that's also very important in my opinion so that nothing goes wrong and it doesn't look kind of wonky on the threading. So now that I've finished the center back with the belt, I'm going to actually go ahead and do the center front with the belt as well. Alright guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. <coughs> oh, I hurt my nose. Oh my nose, what was I gonna say? I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed my outfit. I'm not the best at making traditional clothing. Um, this is actually all from Insight, doing a little bit of visual research as well as looking at some patterns that I saw through Google and other YouTubers. This is just my version of how I made the Chishan Rukin. If you're curious, I will put some links down below of some other people and other patterns that are really great to reference to. I enjoyed making this. It made me feel so much closer to the culture. For me, it's more fun and indulging. Don't forget to hit that like for more videos like this. Hit the subscribe if you like watching videos and tutorials like this. And don't forget to spread peace, love, and happiness. It's only up to you to make every day beautiful. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. Yo, why am I so thirsty? Very anticlimactic. This is so awkward. Fallen. I know, I feel it, girl. I had a pillow. <coughs> Why is it so far away? <coughs> Falling from the chair I'm supposed to sit on. Why is the wrong gun? <laughs> oh! This is still not high enough. What the fly? Say no. <laughs>